Hey guys, so this is a program that I love um, to use for intros to any reading we have that has locations in it that my students might not know. Um, a lot of times people assume that our students have the background knowledge that they need in order to read a novel. Say, we're reading Call of the Wild right now. Well, my students don't have the background knowledge that they need in order to read Call of the Wild. So I try to help them understand where in the world the books are written. And this little program helps me do that. So one of the things that I like to use it for is, for example, if a character travels from here to there to yonder in the book, then they can track that progress if, it, if they're real places. They can use this map feature to track that. It has a place to type an address, but I'm just going to show you an example. Um, I'll move over. That was my pretend one. Let's pretend that we're teaching some Louisiana history and we want to talk about Monroe and Shreveport. I don't know anything about Louisiana history, so anyway. Moving on, we're going to pretend that we want to show a route from Monroe to Shreveport to Alexandria and back to Monroe. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and have that here. So the feature that I like to use is either the line feature or the scribble feature. And you can teach your kids both of them. But on the line feature, you just click on line and we'll start in Monroe. And we're going to pull the line. You just click where you want to start it and you pull it and then you click again to make it stop and then you can change the angle of it then. Every time you click you can change the angle. Click, click, click. We're going to Shreveport. Click, click. We made it to Shreveport and now we're going to go I guess on this loop-de-loop -loop here and go down to I-49 down to Alexandria and then you can go from Alexandria back up through the Kasachi I guess that's how you say it, Kasachi National Forest so we've made it back up to Monroe and let's say we're ready to get out of here you just move the cursor back up to the tool that you were on I was on line, it was selected, and you just click off of it, and now you can move your map around again. So, how do we save this? That is the next question. We save it by saving a link. I've tried to save the document using this little save drawings in different formats button, but it never works for me. And then the download option, it only lets you save it as a, GP, a GMAP GIS file or markers as a CSV. So I guess it's a comma separated value, like a, you could open that on Excel, but I want the image. So I don't use the download link and I don't use the save link uh, button, button. I use the link link or the link button and it pops up here and you can save whichever one of these that you want to save. I usually tell my students to do the view only one and control C and then you can close that. And so then I'll just have them open up a Google Doc and copy and paste that link in or sometimes I'll, I'll try to walk them through how to link an image in a document. But for right now we're just looking at go into a Google document and um, pasting that link in and that's their assignment that they'll turn in for that that little section. I really enjoy GMAP just because it it's an easy way to get students to get engaged in where in the world their um, story is taking place and it does do the whole map of the world. Oh, I zoomed way out. We had lots of worlds there. <laughs> anyway, you can go anywhere in the world. It's good for social studies, good for 
English class. It's good for science class. I think it's a fun tool to use. I'm sure you could find different ways to use it in other classes besides the ones that I said even. Thanks for watching, guys.